Welcome to PV Magazine Live. This is Christian Rosland, America's editor at PV Magazine, and we're here at the Solar Power International Trade Show in Las Vegas. I'm joined by Philip Schroeder, the global head of sales at Zonin. Philip, thanks so much for talking with me. Thank you for taking the time. So, Zonin obviously has a big presence now in the U.S. market with the new uh, U.S. headquarters in Los Angeles, you know, a big product announcement that came out at the beginning of this year. Can you tell me, overall, what are the dynamics that you're seeing in the U.S. residential energy storage market? The U.S. market is very dynamic, so if we look from a global point of perspective, for us it's the most important market next to Germany, so we see that there is lots of growth. We have been delivering since March to hundreds of installers, um, basically everywhere, from Cayman Islands to Hawaii, so it's very dynamic. Things are changing um, due to regulatory changes, net metering is changing, so it's very dynamic and it's exciting. That's great to hear. Now, obviously, we know that California is a significant energy storage market, but I don't think we hear as much about some of the other state markets. To you, other than California, what are the most significant state markets for Zonin's business? We have a significant market in every state where backup plays an important role. So there are many people who are interested in having energy security. So they want to be sure that in a, in, a, in a case of a grid failure, that they are secure and that they have air conditioning, that they have refrigerators, and that they have clean energy. Yeah, so, and this is a driver that we see across the nation. Yeah, so it's the only driver that we actually see in every state. People are increasingly interested in supplying themselves with clean energy and be secure in case of grid failure. So that's a, one of the key drivers that is the same everywhere. And then we have uh, hotspots where we have different drivers like net metering that faded out like in Nevada, but also in Arizona. We have demand charges coming in, so we think that something is moving in Arizona, but also in uh, California. And obviously, um, Hawaii is a hotspot due to high electricity prices and also to the changes in regulation. Interesting. Now, in terms of changes in regulation, obviously California's AB 2514 was a big driver for energy storage. Uh, obviously, what's gone on with the changes to net metering in particularly Hawaii, where we've gone really to a self-consumption model, obviously this is a driver. Other than that, what do you see as the significant policy initiatives going on, both in the negative and positive sense, that impact energy storage? I think the, the, the biggest lack that we see as Sonnen in, in, uh, in the US is we need to have a liberalization in aggregation of decentralized assets. Yeah, so what's very important for us, just to give you an example, in Germany we just introduced two days ago the first um, energy flat rate. So basically we enabled more than 13,000 customers with energy storage to participate in frequency regulation. So we're bidding that into the, into the market and the earnings that we make is enabling our customers to have zero electricity cost. And because we're capable of aggregating and because we're capable of having access, for example, to frequency stabilization markets. This is something that is not well prepared, let's put it that way, yet in the US. And we think that this is the biggest single policy driver for storage because storage can do so much more once you are allowed to aggregate. Yeah? So we think that it's time on, in, in, on state level but also on federal level to liberalize um, decentralized storage capacities. I think that's the biggest driver from our perspective. Yes, yeah, certainly what's going on with the Zonin community in Germany is fascinating. I, I note that in a recent edition of PV Magazine, that was the top technology in our downstream technology awards, was the Zonin community. Even though it isn't technically a hardware, you know, it's a, it's a different sort of solution. Um, but in terms of the United States, uh, I've noticed that there are a number of states where there are regulatory processes that are moving in that direction. Can you comment on what's going on with the REV process in New York and with some of the distributed uh, energy resource aggregation uh, processes in California? And if you see these moving towards what you're talking about in terms of aggregation of assets? I think generally we can say that the utilities and also the regulators start to understand that only the aggregation is the most economical viable business case also for on a state level from the utility perspective but also from the customer perspective and that has been understood. So we do see that more or less in every state regulators start thinking about it but they only started to think. Yeah? So we need to really enhance the process and I think there's much potential and there's much way ahead of us still, but it's going in the right direction. They start to understand that this is needed. And how far away really is a process like REV from being able to aggregate these things? I mean, I, I know that REV is still somewhat vague, but can you comment on what you see in that specific process? 
I think what, what in, in general there are a, a couple of layers. There's the, the, the regulatory framework, but there's also standards in terms of communication. So what do you need in to aggregate? Yeah, what is the communication protocol? What is the speed of communication? What are the requirements? Do you need to have? Um, can you use online uh, connections of the homeowner? Do you need specific independent um, uh, communication lines? I think there's so much to talk about, but I think the, the ground regulation is that there is access that you allow companies to to try it out and to simply participate and take part in frequency regulation markets for example yeah so let the free markets um, come up with solutions and let them compete for the best one I think that's that's what we need so first of all the regulator needs to allow us to do our job to try to come up with the best solutions and that's what we need so we need to the open door to go to walk through very interesting thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me Phil thank you and this is Christian Rosland with PV Magazine Live, and we're here at the Solar Power International Trade Show in Las Vegas.